What's up, guys? Welcome back. Today, we're talking about one of America's favorite foods, fried chicken. I like to brine my chicken. It's optional, but it definitely imparts a lot of flavor into the bird. You can soak it in some salt water or use the brine recipe that I have in the description below. After you brine it for 4 to 24 hours, go ahead and rinse it off and then dry it with paper towels as thoroughly as possible. Next, we're going to begin by spatchcocking the chicken, which basically means taking some sharp scissors and cutting the backbone out of the chicken. So you want to start by cutting down one side of the backbone as you see me doing here. Sharp kitchen scissors really come in handy for this. You can get them on Amazon. And then remove that backbone. You can save it for chicken stock, throw it in the freezer and use it later. Take a nice sharp knife, make an incision on that breastbone and then use your hands to uh, break it open. And then take that same sharp knife and cut down the middle of the breastbone, separating the chicken into two halves. Like so. There you go, now you have a half chicken. Next, you're gonna go ahead and part out the leg quarter. There's not much joint or cartilage right there, so that's a pretty easy thing to do. And then to remove the leg from the thigh, you wanna make an incision right there in the joint. Use a little elbow grease, and then it comes right out nice and easy. I also like to cut the breast into two separate pieces because the breast is usually pretty large and uh, you want everything to fry at the same time. So repeat that process with the leg quarter and cutting the breast into two pieces. And then I like to use those kitchen scissors to just go ahead and chop off that wing. And there you have it. You got a nice 10 piece ready to get fried up. Who wants some fried chicken? Now we're gonna go ahead and add in some buttermilk, put everything into a nice big bowl, submerge it in that buttermilk, and then we're gonna season the buttermilk up. I like to use buttermilk for my fried chicken rather than an egg wash. Here we're using some Worcestershire sauce, a little hot sauce, salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Get in there with your hands, make sure that everything is coated nicely. looking good. You can cover that, pop that in the fridge for one to four hours. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start seasoning our flour. I'm going in with some salt, some seasoned salt, some adobo, which is optional, but it's delicious if you can find it. Followed by some garlic. Feel free to add whatever spices or seasoning you like on your fried chicken also. Going in with two packets of sasson, cayenne pepper, onion powder, and some tonies just to spice things up a little bit more. Always taste your flour to make sure that it's seasoned adequately. If you don't, you're just guessing and nobody wants unseasoned fried chicken. Get in there with your hands and mix everything around. Now you want to make sure you get off any excess buttermilk before throwing it in the flour and then make sure that each piece of chicken is coated beautifully and evenly in that seasoned flour. Shake off any excess flour and then we're gonna place that on a wire rack. You want the chicken to sit on a wire rack for about 20 to 30 minutes. This accomplishes two things. One, it allows the flour to adhere to the meat. And two, it allows the chicken to come up to room temperature so that when you drop the chicken in the hot grease, it does not drastically reduce the temperature of your grease, which will result in not so crispy chicken. Looking for 350 degrees and we got it. Another important tip is to not overcrowd your fryer. So I'm going in with about three to four pieces, depending on which pieces we're going with. Check them occasionally, make sure they're not sticking to the bottom. Move them around a bit, flip them. Make sure they're achieving that beautiful golden brown. Here's another look. We fry these in 350 degrees for about nine to 12 minutes, depending on how big your chicken is. 
You can also remove them once they get the color that you like, pop them in the oven at about 350 degrees until they reach the internal temperature that you're looking for, which is 165 for white meat and 175 for dark meat. I like to use peanut oil, but you can use vegetable oil or canola, whatever your preference is, is fine. Looking delicious. Here I am removing the chicken from the grease onto that wire rack and popping that into the oven to stay warm while the rest of our chicken finishes frying. Looking beautiful. Trademark money shot for you guys. Make sure to put some of this on the side if you're doing the cooking because it will not last long. There you have it, folks. That is my recipe for fried chicken. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, enable those notifications, and as always, thank you for your support.